All right, we are going to continue our game of over under. Earlier, we talked about the NFC. We are going to shift our focus now to the AFC. We will set the win total. You guys say over under. Got it? Good. Got it. Great. Okay. So let's begin with the defending Super Bowl champs, the Broncos. Peyton Manning, gone. His backup, as Trey Wingo calls him, the Brockweiler, he is gone as ah, well. Nice. Now they've got Mark Sanchez and Paxton Lynch over under nine and a half wins. Will? I told you earlier, I was so wrong on the Broncos last year. I didn't think they'd make the playoffs to win the Super Bowl. Um, but the analysis remains the same. They've got a great defense. They're going to turn over that offensive line. Four out of the five starters will be new with Mark Sanchez now behind that line. I just don't see him getting over nine wins. I don't, you can't play football without an offensive line, despite the fact they did a pretty good job of it last year. Here's the thing, and I am not the biggest Mark Sanchez fan at all. I've been very critical of him in his career, but because they've got that defense, he's played on a team like this before. That Jets team he played on was, in essence, this kind of team, and he's got better weapons to work with on the outside in the receiving core than he ever did in New York. So I think because of that, they can get past the nine and a half wins. I can see them being a 10-win team. I, they'll be close. They're going to have to run the ball. But yeah, they'll and, be able to run the ball. you got to have an offensive line yeah. to do that. But he's much more mobile than Peyton Manning was. He can at least escape the pocket a little bit, where you, you don't have to worry about the offensive line and pass protection as much as you did with Peyton, who was basically, let's face it, all-time great, but was a statue back there at this stage of his career. So I like them barely, barely above nine and a half wins. I got them barely above nine and a half as well because the division is better. The Raiders are going to be better. The Chiefs made the playoffs last year. San Diego, that's not an easy team to play. So that division is going to test Denver with a new quarterback in place. I can see them getting to 11 wins because I trust in John Elway. John Elway, Hall of Fame quarterback, at the rate he's going, he's going to be a Hall of Fame executive. He's on that Ozzie Newsome path, what Ozzie Newsome has been able to do as the Baltimore Ravens general manager, where he's a Hall of Fame tight end who's become a Hall of Fame executive. John Elway has a clear understanding. Think about this. He turned over this team essentially after they got the brakes beaten off of them in the Super Bowl by Seattle. He said, Peyton, you're not going to go through. I'm going to make sure you're going to win a Super Bowl. We're going to turn over this team. And he sold Peyton Manning on it. He's always been good at making adjustments. People crushed him for getting rid of John Fox. That worked out pretty well, Gary Kubiak, and revamping that team and having that defense. They can get the 10 or 11 wins. I'll take the over on Denver because John Elway knows what he's doing. I trust John Elway. I don't trust Mark Sanchez, though. All right, let's hey, talk remember, about... remember, first years of the Jets, AFC Championship games based on the formula they're going to have in yeah, Denver. They had 9 and 11 wins in those years. So yeah, that, and this is a better team, better offense. We'll see what happens. Offense. All right, let's talk about a, team, a little something about winning championships, the New England Patriots. So... Their offseason so far has really been dominated about the news that Tom Brady's four-game suspension has been upheld in court, leading them to drafting quarterback Jacoby Brissett in the third round of the draft. Over under 10 and a half wins. George? Uh, by the way, I did notice you just underrated the, Brown the Broncos again this year. I know. You did it again. The same analysis. <laughs> same, same, same. Oh, same. same. <laughs> <laughs> Those who forget um, the past with, and condemn the repeated. With the Patriots, <laughs> with the Patriots I I'm going to go over it. Listen, I, and I, maybe Barry Barely over uh, because I can see them. I think they can split those first two games. It may be hard uh, if Brady doesn't play. Um, but even if they go one and three, I still feel like they, they that division, man, they've owned it for so long. I, I, trust me, I grew up in Miami. I know what Tom Brady has done <laughs> to the Dolphins, Jets, and Bills over his career. So I, I just feel like they can get 11 wins. They can still win that division. They won it one year with Matt Castle, or didn't win it. They actually still won 11 games, though, with Matt Castle, even though they lost the division that year. So based on that alone and their history and Belichick and the fact that Brady will be back, even if he is suspended, I'm going barely above 10 and a half. Freddie? Bill Belichick's still alive, right? He is. Over. Uh, that's, uh, that's, that's all, all you need, need to okay. say. Seriously. I mean, I don't need to say anything else. George said it for me about that organization. As long as Bill Belichick is breathing, even if Tom Brady's not there the first four games, I could see them going two and two and three and one with Jimmy Garoppolo as their quarterback. I could see that happening and rallying around the fact that wait until the Captain America gets back and we're going to make sure he's not 0 and 4 and 1 and 3. As long as Bill Belichick's alive, they'll be over. I'll tell you this. I like them to win the Super Bowl. I like them to win the whole thing this year. Really? Yeah. Well, actually, they're, they are the odds-on favorite right yeah. now. So they should be. Favorites. Uh, over. I mean, okay. this is the revenge season. Yeah. They'll go two and two. They'll look, Arizona, Miami, Houston, Buffalo. They'll win the two division games. Yeah. They'll go two and two. Then Tom Brady comes back and the ultimate revenge tour starts. They will easily go for 10 games. Yeah. All right. In agreement here. All right, let's move over to the eighth and talk about the Cleveland Browns, a team that hasn't reached the playoffs in over a decade. 
out went Mike Pettin, in came Hugh Jackson. One of their biggest question marks last year, Johnny Menzel, he is out of the picture now. And that's where Robert Griffin III came into the picture. He's expected to compete with the other four QBs on the roster for the starting job. Over under four and a half wins. Ready? Over because Johnny Manziel's not there anymore. That's automatically worth two wins because that distraction <laughs> is not there, number one. Number two, Hugh Jackson can coach. Yeah. The one year as a head coach of the Oakland Raiders, I thought he got a raw deal by being fired. Hugh Jackson was the Frank Vogel of the Oakland Raiders, what happened with him in the Indiana Pacers, because the Raiders were on the right path, and they decided they wanted to get somebody better, and it finally took them years later to get a Jack Del Rio. Hugh Jackson understands how to get the best out of players, and you know he wants to show people that the Oakland Raiders made a mistake. Based on, they're not a playoff team. That's a couple of years from that. They still have a lot of holes there. But I can see them getting the five, six wins. I'll take the over on Cleveland. I'm with Freddie. I'm going over Hugh Jackson, eight and eight with the Raiders when they were like, ugh, the Raiders. Bro. <laughs> they, they were eight and eight that season. He's been great with quarterbacks, whether it was Joe Flacco as an assistant, Andy Dalton as an assistant. He's handled quarterbacks really well. Even Matt Ryan. He was an assistant with Matt Ryan early in his career, too, when Matt was, was just coming into the league. So Hugh Jackson, I love the analytics. I love Sashi Brown. I love Paul DePodesta. I think it's a great move because you know what? Whatever else they've been doing for the last 30, 40 years hasn't worked. You might as well go, as uh, Will said, if somebody zigs, go zag. You know what I mean? And I like that part of it. I also think that Cody Kessler eventually will be the guy there. Um, I do think that Hugh Jackson could be the potential guy to fix RG3. If he doesn't fix RG3, RG3 could be in trouble. But I like Cody Kessler in the long term. That kid played... At USC, he had tons of turnover, tons of turmoil and chaos there. So he was able to succeed in yep. those situations. I like him as the long-term quarterback there. So I do like the Browns. I like it over, and I like their long-term future as there's, well. Uh, there's a group thing going on. Mm -hmm. We all agree. And we all agree on the promise and hope of the Browns, which is just a dangerous That's place. Weird. <laughs> That's so weird. I think over, too, there's just this sort of breath of fresh air. Perhaps it's no more Johnny Manziel, and perhaps it's analytics. It's just kind of blowing through Cleveland right now. But I, I like it. I think Hugh Jackson can coach as well. I think this is a, a team, that list of players you put up a minute ago. I mean, that alone, how many new faces are going to be in that locker room? This, this, I, I don't know. There's something hopeful about it Cleveland does. right That's now. That's a great point. I hope we do this word. show again because I want to I want to record this and we are going Let's to record it. it and then play it again. Dicting the Browns go over get five. Four and a half. Yeah. I mean, that, I don't riskiest think thing yeah. we've done all day. Yeah. I can I see them getting the seven. Well so you guys both talked about the Raiders. Let's talk about they went seven and nine last season with their young core and QB Derek Carr as well as wide receiver Amari Cooper. They got off to a great start to finish below 500. Um, they bolted their defense with safety Carl Joseph out of West Virginia. So over under eight games for them. I'm going to go first on this. I go okay. last. Yeah. All these ones we all agree on. Let's see if we agree on this. Over. I'm a believer in the Raiders. This, this, this roller coaster is going up. All needles, everything pointing to getting better. Um, I think David Carr is real. I think he's good. And this team's being built the right way. That defense coming together with Khalil Mack and now Bruce Irvin. Maybe Jihad Ward's a player that can get in there. And I really like Carl Joseph, the safety from West Virginia. This, this, the Raiders over eight wins feels feels very, very realistic to me this year. Yeah, I hate to do this to you, man, but I'm with you. Seriously, I, I was on this train last year because I said people, Raiders fans are very passionate, at times very delusional. <laughs> They're like college football fans a lot of the time. And I said, you know what? Jack Del Rio could be the best thing this organization has done in a long time because he's not putting up with any nonsense. He's not putting up with any foolishness. And you could clearly tell that on the football field last year. So what do they do in the offseason? If you're going to lose a Hall of Fame in Charles Woodson, what do you do? You not only draft Joseph, but you get Reggie Nelson. You get him to leave Cincinnati. He tied for the NFL lead in interceptions last year with eight. Then you also you bring in Sean Smith from the Kansas City Chiefs. So you weaken a division rival, and your secondary is better. Now you got Irvin, you got Mack, and you got Derek Carr with Amari Cooper is going to be the next great wide receiver in the National Football League. And by the way, Michael Crabtree wasn't too bad as a Robin to his Batman. <laughs> they could win 10 and make the playoffs. I'm with you, Will. This train continues to be on the right track, and I can't believe we're finally saying this commitment to mediocrity, a proud tradition in Oakland since 2002, may finally be coming to an end. I'm with you. I'm big on the I echo all your sentiments. Yes, I agree. Latavius Murray, good running back. Yes. Obviously, Derek Carr in the wide receiving core. The defense looks really good, and they're young. Like, they're on the rise. You rarely see this happen where you get all these young guys, and then all of a sudden it kind of just comes together. I think we're going to see that, to be honest, another team that we're not talking about today. I think we're a year two away from seeing that in Jacksonville, too. I, I think, think that right. that's oh, going to be a, yeah. another one of those teams that's yes. going to be on the rise. But Oakland is that team. They're ready to take that next step, I think, over on the Oakland Raiders. And look, 
It's funny because I was with Dallas Braden the other day here who played for the Oakland A's. They need to get him a stadium. And I'm not one on, uh, you know, stadium welfare. I'm not big on that. But, man, the way he described that, that Coliseum, they need something there. And they need to keep them in Oakland. Like, to me, they're the not stadium, the right. stadium may be in Las Vegas. Yeah. yeah. I wouldn't mind Vegas either, I've got to be honest. But, but it, you know what? I feel like that same. franchise needs to be in Oakland. Yeah, it so wouldn't let's, be the let's same. Hopefully, let's hope they get it done. I love Vegas, too. But Las Vegas Raiders. No, 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 no. Actually, it works. Actually, perfect. No, I'm, no I'm just talking in terms of, yeah. you know, from... Oakland Raiders just sound better. No, no, better. agree. Yeah, but if there me. was another city that had to take the Raiders, yeah. Vegas would be the one. Yeah, three, but let's yeah. keep them in Oakland. Yeah, three Real top quick, players under 25. Over under four minutes when we get back from the break. What? Over under four minutes we have in the show. Oh, under for sure. Okay, more first take after the break. We'll see if George is right. Completely under. <laughs> <laughs> doesn't realize the roster that he saddled Frank Vogel with, which isn't very good outside of Paul George and Miles Turner. I also think it's weird that he talks about that the voice issue, that there's a voice in the locker room issue where the guys get used to the voice. There's only a couple of guys in there that have been in that locker room for the entire time that Vogel's been in there. And he talks about how in Boston, Red Arbach would switch guys. Well, yeah, he switched Casey Jones or fired Casey Jones mm -hmm. and replaced him with Jimmy Rogers after Jones had gone to four finals and Rogers got knocked out in the first two rounds. It seems like he just conveniently forgot that part of it. He made an excuse because Frank Vogel, he was never in his corner. Right. And you could clearly tell when he said that Frank Vogel practically begged for his job, begged for Larry Bird not to have his press conference. Which is BS. Well, well, complete BS. There. Why would you do that to somebody that has earned more than what you gave him in value? I mean, he can make any decision he wants because he's in charge of things, but that was awful the way that he, he dealt that out to Frank Vogel. That was terrible by Larry Bird. I'll leave it to others to defend the quality of Frank Vogel's um, coaching. I will just point out Larry Bird's own reason his own analysis doesn't hold up under its own weight it makes no sense george you point out only george hill paul george and jan mahimi have been there the entire time that uh, the vogel's been there to get tired of his voice everyone else is new they couldn't have gotten tired of his voice and the other thing is it flies in the face of phil jackson's career or what greg popovich is doing right now or rick carlisle for that matter men that have spent many years successful years with the same franchise with the same team it just Many people say you shouldn't criticize a legend, and Larry is a legend, but I can analyze the words you have given us and whether or not they make sense. They make no sense. Well, we could criticize Larry Bird yeah. as an executive. I mean, as Absolutely. a player, it's, it's hard to criticize him, but as right. an executive, he's yeah. made some questionable moves. It's pretty, you gave Monte Ellis a four-year deal worth $44 million when his game is predicated on speed and burst, and he seems to have lost some of that. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. a problem. Maybe you want something different than what Vogel does. Maybe you want an offense, but yes. the reason you gave that you want to change in the locker room, that right. doesn't make sense. Right, but he didn't yeah. even run that by Paul he George. Did. Exactly, right. and then he fired him over the phone? Right, that's weird. Didn't even do it face to face? That's like breaking really? up with somebody over text. Yeah. Are you speaking from experience? Oh. I might be. <laughs> wow. I knew I'm it. totally joking. I knew it. Oh, Who was man. the unlucky guy? This Ruthless. is so fun. Good thing we're running out of time. Freddie, yes. George, Will, for you. <laughs> and Prim, have a wonderful weekend. Enjoy the Kentucky Derby, too. Yeah.